and welcome to the show, Frankie. Hi. Welcome. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Um, I just saw you in Calvin Burger, and I thought you were absolutely amazing. Um, so good. Oh, thank you. And we'll get to talking about that more. But before we get into all of the wonderful things that you're currently working on, um, the first thing that I always like to ask my guests is what made you want to become an actor? What made me want to become an actor? I I think it's just... I, I, part of it <laughs> makes me feel like you're born with it, like the constant need for attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it was also just... I think influence. Um, I was very influenced by, of course, the big one, which is Disney. Mm -hmm. um, and I had like every book on tape. And so that kind of, that's where it started just acting out those little scenes and stuff. Um, but then as I got older, I started to realize like, oh, you can actually have a career in acting. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I think that's like something I would want to do that. And I just never felt like I was good at anything else, <laughs> <laughs> like no real big, like, you know, trade skill. So I was like, I'm either going to be like a secretary or like an actor. There's going to be like yeah. no in between. And luckily I, I do feel like, um, the business part of acting is a lot of like secretary work anyway. Yeah, <laughs> so like that's I'm very doing true. That for myself. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think I was just influenced by the things that I was consuming as a kid and, you know, dreaming like one day that could be me. Hmm. And what was like the the first time that you took an acting class? What, were you under 18 still? How was that for you? And how were your parents involved in it? I um actually very heavily involved. Um, it's kind of started with my mom. She put me in every after school sport that she could possibly think of. <laughs> and of course I hated all of them. And You're like, I just, cannot like, do this. Yeah. And I wasn't just like bad at them. I was also like very, there was like an attitude that went with it where I was just like, I'm going to pretend to do this really bad. So like, you don't ever have to like make me come here ever again. Oh, so, so you were acting before you were acting. <laughs> th there you go. And thankfully my mom was able to see through that or see something. Um, and we all grew up, I'm a very, very musical family. So we all like play an instrument and we all sing. And so, um, but never really the acting thing. And so one day when we were at the library, my mom found this postcard that I, something about like auditions for a kid's show, like all kids. And so that kind of started that. And my mom enrolled me in that. And I was like, whoa. And that was the first time I had ever met other theater kids. Mm. And I was like, oh, we're all weird. And we all like <laughs> sing whenever we want to. And do you know what I mean? And like, we don't have to explain ourselves or our behaviors. Um, so I think that was... Um, that was the first time as a kid. So really my mom is kind of the one to blame for everything. And then, you know, once you get the acting bug, it, I don't think it ever goes away. <laughs> You're kind of no. always looking for an opportunity. <laughs> well, yeah, because there's, there's nothing else in the world like it. So there, it's not like you can compensate with something else. Like this is the only yeah. thing that you can do. <laughs> yeah. And then doing that bled into doing high school theater and then doing branching out and going and doing like community theater and doing, I was always in a show and that's really all I cared about was like, what's the next season? What show can I be in? What can I do? And I didn't even like want to be the lead or anything. I was like, I just want to be in it. Mm. Um, so that's kind of where all of that started. That's, I mean, that's so true though. Even with film and TV, it's like, you just want to be in it, right? It's not like, I don't oh, have yeah. to be the person who is talking the entire time. Heck, let me be the person who's in the corner the whole time, watching <laughs> it all go down and then give me the couple like, good sidelines. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so what was the first uh, TV or film venture for you? The first TV film venture would have been an episode of Modern Family. Okay. Um, I think I had a total of three, maybe two lines. And that yeah. was, it was a big deal. <laughs> It's always a big deal when you get that first co-star role. I mean, there oh, it's yeah. hard to get. There's hundreds of people auditioning for things. It's difficult to even land that. 
Yeah, and that was a cool one too because Modern Family was a show I would watch with my family, and of course, like then they were eleven years in, ten or eleven years in. So to be able to call home and say like I booked something on Modern Family, and them know what the show is because sometimes you'll go in for stuff and they'll be like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so like, true. Okay, so then it kind of like takes away like the cool factor from it somehow. Yeah. But um, getting to call home and say I, uh, you know, I'm going to be on a show we watch that was really cool. And where where's home for you? I grew up in Selma, California. So it's about three hours from LA. It's like the dead center of California. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you moved to LA right after you turned 18, right? When you were like, I'm out of here? Yeah, I took a gap year after high school because um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, as, as much as I loved acting, I never really looked at it um, at that time as like a career. Mm. And so I was like, well, let me just, um, audition for, I auditioned for AMDA cause I had some friends who had gone there and they had like wonderful things to say about it. And I cared more about getting out of the small town versus the school. So I was like, if this is an easy way for me to transition into a big city, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it kind of just like all worked out. And then once I got there, my initial thought was, well, let me just get the bachelor's degree and then I'll figure out what I can do with it later. Um, and then my senior year there, we would get a lot of people who like industry people who were watching our class and stuff. And my feedback was always positive. So I was like, well, let me, let me at least try it. And so after graduation, if I'm not on TV in five years, then I'll like give up this whole thing. And like, you know, I don't know. Where <laughs> five that years. Number. That's pretty short. <laughs> well, I, and that's the thing though. I, it wasn't like I, you need to be the lead in a movie. I was like, if I can just be on TV in any capacity, whatever okay. that means, if I could just be on TV in five years, then I'll know that like something can start from there. Mm -hmm. um, and then a few months after graduation is when I booked my first commercial. And I was like, okay, wow. that's going to be on TV. So that's, that's one. Um, and then it kind of just like snowballed from there. Wow. I mean, it's great to set goals for yourself. And I feel like a lot of this industry, if you don't have that innate belief that it's going to happen, and that you just got to believe it's going to happen, it's like you could so easily fall out of it. Oh, yeah. I think most of this career is just um, living <laughs> in a fantasy world of like, <laughs> well, maybe someday. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So how did High School Musical, the musical, the series uh, come about for you? I was sitting on the couch and I got my little notification and it just said audition. And you know how like uh, you can't read the whole entire email mm -hmm. so that I just said audition high school musical I was like done because I already knew it was going to be adapted into a series and um probably like a year prior to that I remember reading about it um and so I was like okay it's happening so I confirmed right away and um I you're like I don't even need to read the breakdown we're I good I <laughs> no I uh I confirmed and then I read the breakdown I was like oh okay so this is going to be really fun and then you know did the whole I think it was five auditions over the course of three weeks. And mm. then it was like, it was so quick. I kind of always assumed those things would go so slow because, you know, you're like kind of like casting a show. But I think my character was like the tail end of the roles that they were casting. So everything was very quick. Wow. Three weeks. I mean, I've been through testing processes that are like five months long. I can't even yeah. imagine three weeks. It's crazy. I honestly kind of prefer it because then you don't have time to get in your head or like remember that thing. And I was also, it was like a, I remember it being a, like a really meaty audition season too. So I was going in for all of these other things too. So High School Musical was just one of, a, you know, a lot of different things I was going in for. So I was like, well, one of these has to work out. Like mm. I would hope. Um, and then luckily <laughs> the one that did, did. <laughs> And it sounds like it was kind of like the perfect thing for you. You'd been preparing your whole life in theater and musicals to do a role like this. Yeah, I feel like it is my greatest manifestation. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, like, and in the weirdest, most bizarre, pleasant way possible of always, you know, I grew up on the Disney Channel and always looking up to those people that were doing those not just on their shows but got to go off and like have their own record deal or they went off and did broadway or like doing all these different things everything that i wanted to do and it was all still within the world of musical and 
um, performing and Disney. And I was like, ah, that's what I want to do. So this, it just worked out in, a, it's like, I don't know. I, it definitely is meant to be, I think. Hmm. And is this your first time in a lead role on a show for like a long sustaining series? Yeah. And how has that been for you? I mean, like the the actual work behind it. I don't think people understand how long the days are. And when you're doing episodes back to back, how have you managed to like stay mentally healthy and physically healthy and get yourself and your voice resting? Yeah, I mean, that it, it is like, it's almost like a marathon. And I think in terms of like high school musical, you go away because we don't we film in Salt on location in Salt Lake City. So mm. not only am I like gearing up to go do this, but also like I have to like pack up and move. So um, it, it, it definitely is like mentally preparing like I'm we're going to shoot this show for four months. And um, this past season, which was our fourth season filming, we didn't get any breaks. So we shot them all the way through. Oh, my gosh. Um, so luckily, I'm a very organized person. And so <laughs> it was a lot of just like always um, just keeping tabs on where we are, what we're doing, what's going on. Um, and every day, it's always something. If you're not filming, you're recording a song. And if you're not doing that, you're in a dance rehearsal. So it is a lot of, um, you know... It almost feels like a college program because <laughs> like, it feels like every day you have class and every class has homework. Mm -hmm. So, um, but uh, it's all fun. Like, this is like what you want to do. And in some ways it really does feel like a vacation from normal life to get yeah. to go off and like actually do the job now and not have to like worry about auditions or anything like that. So um, in a way it's a vacation almost. <laughs> <laughs> it's a working vacation. Yeah. And, you, you know, I don't like have to, you're not living in your place. So like, you're not really thinking about keeping things clean. Like you just mm -hmm. get to live like a college student. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, do you know when that's coming out the new season? I don't. Uh, obviously sometime this year, but I'm not too sure if they're eyeing for a summer release or a fall release or even like as soon as spring. That seems too soon, but um, yeah. Yeah, I, I know they're um, they're working hard on it. Well, and in the meantime, you are off doing Calvin Burger at the Colony in Burbank, yes. which is so good. I had no expectations going into it, and I absolutely loved it. Oh, thank you. What was that process like for you? How has it been putting on this like very large musical in this space? Yeah, it's been fun. I haven't done a show in about four years and I haven't done a musical in about five. So it, it definitely is like, it's comforting knowing exactly what I'm getting myself into. Like I know mm -hmm. I do rehearsals and then I know it like tech and then I know the show will go up and all of that stuff. But this one, for some reason, <laughs> it is like um, my like brain is working double time just to make sure that, you know, everything runs as smoothly as possible. And of course, every day, every show, something still goes wrong. But um, I think that's also the fun of live theater is that like you kind of you're in it right from when it starts and then you go all the way straight to the end. Um, and I'm not like a thrill seeker i don't like roller coasters or like scary movies or anything <laughs> but like this this feels like a safe thrill to be like oh yeah it's starting like once the overture starts knowing that it until bows it's like you have to be in it 100 percent hmm. uh for the listeners at home can you tell everybody what calvin burger is about yeah calvin burger um is uh, what is uh it's the Cierno um, de Bergiac. Is, am I saying that right? I think um, so. <laughs> story set in high school. So um, it follows these four characters around and, you know, kind of like, of course, miscommunication um, and, of course, dealing with body image issues and what they're going through. And they all have like their own thing. And, of course, like, you know, lots of paths are crossing. I think that's one of my favorite things about the musical was one how honest it was about the struggles that teens deal with I mean everyone deals with it but it's like ex just really amplified when you're a teenager about your body and then two oh, just yeah. having this very small cast of only four people and I mean y'all really held your own up there that's a difficult challenge to get through an entire musical with only four <laughs> people no backup dancers there's no ensemble it's just you guys 
Yeah, I do. I've never been in a show with this small of a cast before. And I feel like I'm always waiting for like the fifth or sixth member. I'm like, wait, (laughs) is this one, two, three, four? I guess this is everybody. (laughs) Um, But they've, uh, they're an awesome group of people to work with. That's so cool. Um, Well, that's very exciting. What do you want to do after, let's say after high school musical is over and that phase of your life is behind you? Where do you see your career going? I have always been the type of person who I I'm open for anything. And of course I have all of these dreams that I want to do. Um, but it's just a matter of when it feels like it's going to be like the right time. Mm. So I, and I think, and I mean, I have so much faith in myself that I will get everything done that I want to do. I like, if we're talking like big open wide like of course I would love to be on Broadway I would love to like um lead a film I would love to like write a book I couldn't tell you what that book is about but like I know I want (laughs) one um so um there's like all these things that I want to do um but I think it's just meeting myself halfway and kind of figuring out like what do I actually want to do right now because I don't want to just put out stuff just for the sake of putting stuff out I really want it to be very organic to where I'm at in life um, but in terms of after high school musical, I, I, the biggest lesson I've learned with that is I love being on a TV show and I love mm. working in that type of environment. So I think I will always follow that, um, or look for those opportunities, but I don't know, life is crazy. And especially I think what we've seen in the last couple of years, it, <laughs> sometimes it's not all up to you what you yeah. get to do. But, 100%. Um, yeah, I think just, you know, meeting life halfway and always showing up and, you know, looking for something fun to do. That's like where I think I'm at right now is if I read something um, and, you know, or like an audition or something, and I'm like, I don't know if this sounds fun to be in. I, I am like now starting to pass on those things because I just want to have a good time. Mm. I think you said something really interesting too, which was that you don't want to just put stuff out there to put stuff out there. And I think we're living in this really cluttered space right now where there's so much content and it just yeah. feels like it's nonstop. And a lot of it also feels like, did this really need to be made? Yeah. And I think it's, I mean, that's such an important thing is, is realizing what you feel is important to put out into the world versus what maybe your fans want or what your agents and managers want or whoever in your life is saying, do this, do this, do this. And just, you know, going inward and saying, no, I want to do this instead. Yeah. I think we also like, especially in the world of TikTok and I love a scroll on TikTok. I spent hours on it. I, <laughs> um, you, you're kind of made to think that you have to be everything um, and do everything and be good at everything. And I'm like, ah, like I, you get five things that I can attempt and maybe be good at, but I can't be good at everything. And I don't want to put that pressure on myself to, you know, go down an avenue that maybe I'm just not meant to to do. (laughs) Um, So um, I think if there's an interest and that interest sparks like some sort of business venture, I'm all, I'm down to go down that route. But in the meantime, I'm like, uh, I'm also like so fine being chill. <laughs> yeah, I'm so fine not doing the crazy TikTok dances. I understand that. <laughs> yeah, like that's not me. <laughs> no, it would be bad. It would be really bad. But when you watch those things, doesn't it make you feel like, well, that's the content. So we got to put out content. You know what I mean? It does. I mean, I think for me, I like doing like the lip sync ones because it reminds me of, I don't know if this is before your time, but we used to have a thing called Dub Smash. That was oh, around. Yeah. I mean, it reminds me of Dub Smash and it makes yes. me feel like nostalgic. So I think those are fun. But you put me in front of a camera to try and do a dance or anything. I'm like, baby, no, this is no. not how this works. No, I'm not trying to do homework to do a TikTok. I, uh, <laughs> no. And no. some kids like we have a lot of younger kids on the set of High School Musical and the way they're able to edit in real time and put together. Wild. I'm like, I, I'm like, there's too many buttons already. And I hate mm-hmm. sounding like that because I never wanted to sound like you know, old, but <laughs> an I'm old like, copyright. <laughs> I'm like, I, I just, I don't just tell me how to record something. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I am right there with you. It makes no sense in my brain. I'm like, can't yeah. I just go do something else instead? Can I plant a flower? I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Well, on this show, we like to share uh, funny or bad or embarrassing audition stories. Is there one that you'd like to share with the listeners? 
embarrassing or bad i feel like i prepare for auditions like so if anything goes bad i have like a way out of it um but so none i don't i can't think of there i mean there's been some wild ones for sure but in terms of like bad i remember i was it was a commercial audition for a panera i think okay a commercial and the premise was that it was like these five kids had just graduated high school and the tradition was to go and jump into a lake um obviously you can't do that in a real audition room so they just had to stand on a bench and they were like okay and then you guys are all gonna run in and you guys are gonna be like come on guys it's our tradition it's our tradition and then you're gonna get on the bench and you're all gonna hold hands and then you're gonna jump and so we're like great um and so then we like they yell action and we like all run in and um this one girl um just takes her shirt off and was like yeah come on guys and we were like uh okay okay and then so we just finished off the scene but i remember thinking like is that what people are doing oh my god i just thought it was so crazy um like the instant embarrassment i would feel not only for her but like myself <laughs> and everyone in the room i just don't even know but the way everyone just like handled it too we were all just like uh uh okay um yeah so i think that's probably been one of my crazier auditions that makes my like face want to turn bright red i just <laughs> don't know that i would be able to handle that yeah i mean i still remember her till this day i'm like, oh, I'm like whatever happened to her <laughs> <laughs> do you stalk her on instagram let's be real oh my gosh i'm like i hope she's doing well <laughs> She made bold choices, okay? She hey, she stuck to a choice, and there that's what go. matters. We can't fault her for it. Uh, do you have a specific way that you break down a character, a script, or anything before you go into the audition? Is there something that you've learned that's helped you as an actor? That has helped me as an actor, I think, especially when things are coming in so quickly and you have such a fast turnaround time and you're not really granted. In some cases, you don't even get the whole script. You're just mm -hmm. given about like four to five pages. So I think trying to put as much as myself into whatever the character is. So um, even so if there are like five descriptive words but i really only fit three of those in like my actual personal life i'm like okay just let me like push those through and maybe act the other two so i think mm. that's like a um i guess my process to like internalize something fairly quickly because in most cases you just do it and then that's like the only opportunity you get <laughs> um so i guess like that would be my process Okay. I like that. I think that's interesting that you choose which ones actually fit into you as a person and then yeah, because decide which the end, ones you have to like find. Yeah. Cause like it is kind of a game, right? So you want the mm -hmm. callback and then, and then of course, once you get the callback, you probably get a little more information about what they're looking for and notes that they gave. Um, so yeah, I'm just like a, at this point, at the first process, I just want the callback. So whatever is going to like separate me or make me like sparkle or whatever, um, I'll do that. <laughs> is there anything crazy you've ever done to sparkle more? They just try to like make, um, in some cases, crazy choices. Um, there's sometimes when I'll go in for things and I'm just like, it's really not me. And I like can envision like five other people that it could be, mm. but I'm like, so in those cases, I tend to make the more bolder choices just to show like, hey, um, but and sometimes it has paid off. So yeah, I think just like crazy choices. <laughs> <laughs> Within reason I love to a crazy project. <laughs> yeah, because it's just like, at least I did something, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so I've been doing something recently, which is a lightning round of okay. just like four little questions here um so with the lightning round try not to think too much try to okay. answer quickly are okay. you ready yeah, i'm re i think so okay instagram or tiktok tiktok pasek and paul or andrew lloyd weber <sighs> pasek and paul <laughs> show that you're binging right now uh real housewives person you look up to the most oh my mom oh 
I love that. <laughs> that's so sweet. Wow, that was so fast. <laughs> I, it's a lightning round. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. Shout out to mom. What's up, mom? Shout out to mom. She's the one that called and actually interrupted <laughs> this interview. So maybe Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> she knew that you were going to talk about her. That's it. She heard <laughs> us talking about you before. Yeah, probably. Um, so I know you mentioned you might want to write a book at some point. Do you have any aspirations to also go behind the camera? Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I think there's really nothing that I look at right now and think like, oh, I want to do that someday. But I, I, try, I try not to say no. Um, I don't want to like shut myself off from anything that could be meant for me. So, but right now I don't really see myself behind the camera, but I, it's not a total no. It's not a no. We like yeah. that. Because then I, like, what would it be? You know, like, I, I don't know. Maybe like directing, I guess. I, I don't know. Direct, you could produce. Yeah. I, I could see myself producing something. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> wait a second. Should I be producing something? I know. I mean, because that also like, you know, what if I win the lottery? And then I'm like, well, now I have all this money and I want to yeah. produce something, you know? And then, and then that sparks an like, interest. Let's make 10 movies. Come on. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I've loved having you on the show. Is there, do you have social media that people can follow you on? I'm sure you do. Yeah, I am on Instagram at Frankie A. Rodriguez. And then I'm on TikTok at Frankie with three E's Rodriguez. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not really on Twitter. I think Twitter's a dying art form, which makes me very sad because I used to love it. But it's... <laughs> I never hopped on that train. It's really. Going. It's yeah. leaving us. Um, and yeah. how much longer is Calvin Burger up at the Colony? Calvin Burger, as of right now, we have four more weekends. We run until March twenty six, so we have you have a full month to come catch Calvin Burger. A whole month. Everybody yeah. needs to go. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. It's been so fun talking to you. Thank you.